Hi, <clears throat> welcome to uh, MAT 181 Pre-Calculus Trig. And today we're going to discuss section 3.1, Radiant Measure. <clears throat> so, you know, we usually measure angles in terms of degrees. It's so many degrees, but now we're going to measure it in terms of another type of measurement called radiance. And radians are used uh, quite often in higher math. When we have to do things with <clears throat> angular velocity, or we want to figure out measures of central angles, or things like this. So when we, so when we, instead of using degrees, we go into something called radians. It it sounds a little complicated. I would say, I would say we got, but it's not really as bad as it seems. Let's draw here a axis, and we're going to draw kind of a circle here. If I could draw one halfway decent, and we know on a circle that that the radius is always the same. Like if this is the radius here, this would be the same length right up here. Let me project it up here, maybe, and this would be the same length. And what we're going to do, our radian has the same measure. You can almost form an equilateral triangle inside. That this distance right here is also the same measure of the radius as the radius. So when this happens, this is called one radian. And if we were kind of to split up the circle, you can kind of see maybe on uh, page 94 here. If we kind of split it up, it would look something like this. This would be one radian, this would be two radians, three radians. My drawing's not great. Four radians, five radians, and we come up a little short, six radians. So it's not quite exactly six radians, and it doesn't matter. Maybe this is one inch by one inch by one inch. It could be two inches by two inches by two inches. It's still going to come out the same. It is going to be a little less than six radians in this circle. In fact, it's going to be 6.28 radians in a circle. And 6.28 is the same thing as 2 pi. So how do they come up with this? Well, <clears throat> the definition of the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. If the radius is one unit, the circumference is going to be 2 pi times 1 <clears throat> or 2 pi. But we know in a complete circle there's 360 degrees. So 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians. So 360 and 2 pi, same thing. Another way of looking at pi. So what would pi be? Well, pi we normally think is 3.14, but pi could also be 180 degrees. And this is where it came out about, kind of like. So 2 times 180 is 360 degrees. So pi is also equivalent to about 180 degrees if we're talking about angles. So a little different situation. So in the book, they kind of show some things. But the main thing you're going to be concerned about is converting from radians to degrees and degrees to radians. That's what you're more concerned about. And we're going to do this kind of manually. So. Let me get another sheet of paper here. How do we convert to radians? And it's very simple. We simply take the degrees times pi over 180. And this will give us our radians in terms of pi. A lot of times we don't write them as decimals. We usually write it as like 2 pi. 3 pi over 2, something like that radians. So let's try a simple one. Let's say we had 
60 degrees. And we want to convert that to radians. So we just simply multiply that by pi over 180. 60 goes into 180 three times. This would be pi over three radians. And we've converted it over to radians. <clears throat> Let's say we have a uh, in the example, this is on page 95, they have a negative 270 degrees. Negative 270 degrees times pi over 180. And see, the way I remember this is degrees on top, 180 on the bottom. They're going to cancel each other. We could probably figure out they both end in zero. Cancel that off. We can divide both of these by nine. 9 goes into 27 three times. So this would be a negative 3 times pi. And 9 goes into 18 two times. Negative 3 pi over 2 radians. So if you had a negative 270 degrees, it'd be the same thing as a negative 3 pi over 2 radians. It's just that simple. Okay, how do we change from radians to degrees? Well, radians times, and now we want our pi on the bottom and the 180 because we want to get it in terms of degrees. So we want the 180 on top, and this will give us degrees. So let's try one here. In the book, they got 9 pi over 4. And we want to convert that to degrees. OK, it's in radians. We put 180 over pi. Obviously, the pi's cancel. 4 into 180, let's see, 4 goes into 18 four times. With 2 left over, 4 into 20 is 5. So we can take 180 and divide it by 4, get 45. 45 times uh, 9 would be. Uh, 9 times 5 is 45, carry the 4, 36, 405 degrees. So we can convert 9 pi over 4 to actually degrees. And it's usually easier if we keep these in terms of pi. We can also write them in terms of decimal. Um, here's one that's 4.25 times. We want to convert that. That was radians. We want to convert it to degrees. So we're going to multiply by 180 over pi. And here's where you probably use your calculator, which I have very, here we go. Clear it out, 4.25 times 180, divide by pi, 243. 0.5. Now, I'm going to change this. They sometimes want it in minutes and seconds. Let's go back. Let's think way back. You probably don't even remember doing this. I forget the exact page it was on. Uh, but to convert back, you're just going to take this 0. 0.5 times 60. And 0. 0.5 times 60 was... 30, and so this would be 243 degrees and 30 minutes. And this would change your, your decimal to minutes. OK, so 243 degrees, 30 minutes. You know, so if they, they ask you to convert it, just multiply your remainder here, this decimal portion, by 60, and then the degrees is going to stay the same, 243 degrees. So let's recap here. Let me cover this up. Maybe a clean sheet would be better. Huh? OK, so degrees to radians, degrees times pi over 180. You know, we got 30 degrees times pi over 180 gives you the uh, radiance degrees on top, degrees on bottom, you're going to end up with something with pi. 
radians to degrees, radians on top, pi on the bottom. And this will give you the degrees, 180 over pi. So you might want to take time, pause that tape <clears throat> here and uh, write that down. Okay, so what I did here is I drew a little circle. Let me, let me draw it again for you, or an axis here. And let's, let's measure these off in terms of radians, okay? So we know this is zero degrees. It's also zero radians. Up here, this is 90 degrees. And if we want to change that, we could take 90 times pi and divide it by 180. And we'll find out that that comes out to pi over two radians. So we can actually, even though a radian is not exactly, you know, it's, it's kind of, a, it's about 57 degrees. It's not a real easy number to work with. If you look at it this way, it's not hard at all. If this is a 180 degrees, 180 times pi divided by 180 is gonna give you pi. This is gonna be pi radians. And finally 360, 300, uh, not 360, 270, excuse me, 270 times pi divided by 180 will give you two pi over three. And after a while, you'll be using these a lot. You remember these. Uh, a lot of times when we're graphing this stuff, we have to graph in terms of radians. So zero degrees, pi over two, pi, two pi over three. And if we come right back to the beginning, 360 degrees is equal to, you might say zero, no, it's equal to two pi radians. It's the full circle. 360 degrees is two pi, remember right here. 360, two pi, two pi radians. Okay, well, what about 30 degrees? Let's go 30, 45, and 60. There's 30. So 30 degrees would be 30 times pi over 180. That's going to be pi over 6. 30 into 180, 6. Pi over 6. 45 degrees. From here to here. 45 degrees, 45 times pi over 180. Let's see, 180 divided by 45. 4 pi over 4 radians. Okay, how about 60 degrees? 60 degrees times pi over 180. Three, three, three. So this would be pi over three. 60 degrees, pi over three. So I have a little piece of paper here. I'm gonna list some of these down and let's take a look. And what I've done is I've drawn my relationships. One, two, radical three for, for 30. One, one, square root of two. And one, two, square root of three for the things. So let's take a look at zero. Zero degrees was zero radians. 90 degrees was pi over two. 180 was pi, 270 was three pi over two. And like I said, after a while, you use these a lot. You get used to them. And then two pi for 360. At first, it's kind of a, a learning curve, you know, so it's kind of weird. So those are your major divisions, you know, right up here, your zero, your 90, your 270, I'm 180. And you're 270. 180 is a great show. Pi over two. Okay. So what about 30? 
Well, we just went through and did that. That would be pi over six. So this would be pi over six, pi over four for 45, and pi over three. Okay. And then you could do your other angles. You could do your 120. You know, it's just 120 times pi over 180. Six would go on both of those. So it'll be two pi. Six into 12 is two. Six into 18 is three. Two pi over three. Right here, 120. 2 pi over 3. So what I'm going to do, and again, you could pause the thing after this. You notice a little pattern. 2 pi over 3. 35 is 3 pi over 4. Pretty cool, huh? And then 5 pi over 6. 2, 3, 3, 4, and then 5, 6. Continuing, this will be uh, 7 pi over 6, 5 pi over 4, and 4 pi over 3. And you got your 3 pi over 2, then you got your 7 pi over 4, wait, excuse me, 5 pi over 3, 7 pi over 4, and 11 pi over 6, and then two, 12 pi over 6, which is 2 pi. So these are your kind of breakdowns, and like I said, you might want to pause the tape and kind of write these down. I'm going to have... Um, if you go to handouts, there should be a, a handout like this that you can just download and then fill in. Okay, so what is the, if you go back to page 50 and you look at page 50 in your book, you find out that the sine of zero degrees is zero, the cosine is one, and the tangent is zero. What about 30? 30 degrees is pi over six, which is still one half. Radical three over two, and the tangent is one. And then 45 is going to be radical two over two, radical two over two, they're both the same for the sine and the cosine, and this would be one. And finally, we just do the first quadrant here. We got radical three over two. Remember these switch. If this is radical three over two, this will be, and then this should be one half here. And this will be an, uh, radical three. What did I put down one here? I made a mistake here, excuse me. This is radical three over three. This is one and this is three. There we go. Sorry about that. I gave you the wrong information. Okay. But let's say you forgot how to do this, you know, and you got to, you're trying to figure out, uh, let's do it right here. Let's say they gave you uh, nine pi. Well, we don't want to use that one. Let's say we had 11 pi over 12. Okay, and then you, well, let's not use that one. Well, let's say we want to convert this over first. Okay, so we'll multiply this by, another way we can do it, if pi is on the top, you can think of pi also as being 180, but you could multiply this by uh, 180 over pi, which will cancel that out and give you that information. So if you're using your calculator and you want to do this a little faster, you can take 11 times 180 
is 1980 over 12. Let's see if 12 goes in there evenly. 165. So that'd be 165 degrees. Okay. But let's, let's use um, something a little bit easier to use. Let's say they ask you to find um, the tangent of two, oh, let's, let's try to find the sine, the sine of two pi over three. Okay. Oh my God, I've already lost, okay. No panic here. First of all, it could probably easier to convert to degrees. So two pi over three times 180 over pi, the pi's were canceled. Three goes into 180, 60 times. 60 times two is 120. So how am I gonna find out the sign of 120? Let's say I don't have any reference paper. Okay, so let's look at a 120 degree angle. 120 is our angle. 60 is our reference angle. 60 degrees is a one, two, radical three. One, but we're going in a negative direction. Two, one, two, excuse me, two is the hypotenuse, square root of three. Let me just make that a big old three. One, two, square root of three. So what's the sign? The sign is the opposite, let's call this theta in here, 60 degrees. The sign of 60 degrees is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite is the square root of three positive and the hypotenuse is two. So we could say the sign of two pi over three is radical three over two. And now we know what it is, you see? It's just that easy. Okay, you're saying, well, what if I wanted a tangent of 2 pi over 3? Okay, that's on page 97. They asked for this. Okay, we know the tangent of 2 pi over 3 is the same as the tangent of 120, which we have just calculated. And the tangent, what's the definition of the tangent? Opposite over adjacent. Opposite is radical 3. Adjacent is negative one. So radical three over negative one is gonna be negative radical three. And you just calculate it by drawing your little uh, triangle here. So sometimes, you know, it helps to make a picture to make, make things make sense. Okay, let's try a couple more of those. So they want the sine of three pi over two, okay? Sine of three pi over two. Let's convert that over two degrees. So three pi over two times 180 over pi. Cancel, cancel. Two into 180 would be 90, 90 times three. That's 270 degrees. That's kind of a special angle, huh? So that one we might want to refer to our chart. 270 degrees at the top of the page, they have a chart on 97. So 273 pi over two, but they don't have the, the uh, sign and those things of those. So the sign of 270, let's see. The sign of zero is zero. The sign of 90, is one. The sine of 180 is zero again, and the sine of 270 is negative one. So this would be a negative one. Zero. And we're going to do some, excuse me, we're going to do something a little bit later where you'd be able to find those a little bit easier. Show you a technique for that. 
Okay, let's find one more, the cosine of negative four pi over three, an interesting one. So we have one here. So first of all, we wanna find out what that is in terms of degrees. So uh, in terms of degrees, negative four pi over three would be times 180, and I see my pi on the top, so pi has to be on the bottom. Cancel 60 times that, it would be a negative 240, huh? So that's the same thing as a negative 240. So when I look at a negative 240, I'm going this way, 90, 180, 240. Subtract 360, that'll be the same as 120. One hundred and twenty this way, so our reference angle is a sixty degree angle. One, negative one, two, square root of three. All right, so now I'm going to write the. Uh, so I'm going to write down here cosine negative four pi over three is equivalent to the cosine of 60 degrees. And the cosine of 60 degrees, but not 60, I should put down here that it's uh, negative 240. The reference angle is going to be 60. It's actually closer to 120. Huh? Okay, So negative 240, 60, 120, they all have the same relationships, but the, the difference is going to be the sign. Cosine is the adjacent negative 1 over the hypotenuse 2. So it's going to be a negative 1 half C, and that's why it's going to come out negative. So cosine negative 4 pi over 3 is negative 240, which is 120. Our reference angle is 60 but we're in the second quadrant. And in the second quadrant, only the sign is positive. Fun, isn't it? I'm sorry, maybe I'm making it more confusing than it has to be. You can also look at the diagrams at the top. Maybe they would help you. What else are we going to do here? What else can I confuse you with? And that's pretty it, much it. Let's look at a couple of problems on the exercise and see if they make any sense. Okay, uh, let's look at number seven here. It says convert, this is on page 98. It says convert each of these to radians. Okay, number seven, 60 degrees times pi over 180 equals pi over three, just that fast. We don't want them as a decimal. We want them as a thing. That way I know who's been watching these videos. Okay, let's try 29 here. It says convert this back over to radians, pi over three times 180 over pi. Pi's cancel, three into 180, 60 degrees easy to do. All right, let's take a hard one here. It says convert each to degree, each degree measure to radians. Let's try a problem like 49. Here you have 139 degrees in 10 minutes. Okay, and you want to convert that. First, we want to change this 10 minutes to, uh, to a decimal. It'd be a lot easier. So we're going to take the 10 minutes, I just do it off here, and we're going to multiply by 60, and what happens, Ooh. are we going to multiply it or are we going to divide it, we're going to divide it by 60, aren't we, and then it's going to come out, because we want it to be a decimal, excuse me, we're going to take 10 and divide it by 60, because we want a decimal. Then it could come out to about 0.17. So we got 139 degrees 
0.17 times, and we're going to convert, so this would be pi over 180. Now here we're going to use pi as 3.14. So on our calculator, we can just use the pi key. We got the, this in, let's add 139 to it. That way it's in decimal form, see? Now we're going to multiply that by pi times pi. There we go. And we're going to divide by 360. And this should give me the radians. Uh, let's see, this is number 45, 49, excuse me, I was looking at it. And I get 1.23 radians. I'm off a little bit. What happened here? Let's try this again. Oh, I divided by 360. Why did I do that? Let's try it again. I'm, I don't know what I was thinking. Sorry about that. 0.17 times pi divide by 180. I even got it written down here and I still didn't do it right. Here we go. 2.42 is uh, 8. So we just rounded off 2.43. And we want to write down radians, you know, so we know it's not a decrease. So first I converted this by dividing by 60. That gave me a decimal equivalent. And then I multiply that out and divide it by 180. Oh, I don't know where the other thing came in. The last thing I want to try is, uh, uh, let's try a problem like number, uh, let's try 75. The tangent of 5 pi over 3. What the heck is that? Okay. 5 pi over 3 times pi. No, times 180 over pi. Pi's cancel. That would be 60 times 5. That would be 300. Huh? Let's double check it and make sure. Five times 180 divided by three. 300. So the tangent of five pi over three is the same thing as the tangent of 300 degrees. Now I'm gonna draw a little picture here and a reference angle. 300, there's 360 degrees and this is 270, so 300 should be about right there. Huh? And I'm looking at this angle right here, but our reference angle is going to be 360 minus 300 is going to be 60. Okay, that's going to be. Now, we know in this quadrant that the tangent is negative. Only the cosine is positive. So we are going to get a negative angle. Okay, and it's the same thing as 60, the tangent is 60. So tangent 60 is 1, 2, square root of 3. This would be a negative square root of 3 right there. And tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So it's going to be negative radical 3 over 1 opposite over adjacent, which is negative radical 3. So that, that would be our solution to this problem on number 75, negative radical 3. Okay, so work on these things, see if you can get better than I am, and uh, we'll see you next time.